hello, hello. Alan here. Welcome to my channel. I did a, a read, buddy read with, with Roz at Scala Damien about books. She was a long time commenter on my channel. I'm really glad she's got a channel of her own. And she's uh, surpassing me in subscribers, so she's doing something right. Way to go, Roz. Hey, I just, I read this uh, twice, and I'm just waking up. So I don't know where I'm going to go with this. I'm not prepared. And that might be a good way to do this. Because I don't think there's any spoilers in this book. <clears throat> and I can practically open any page and, and read it without notes. It's really a uh, something else. I mean, it's called experimental. But in my mind, it's not all that experimental as far as like weird punctuation or... Things with letters going this way and that way or um, anything. There's some grammar things in here, but it's pretty straightforward. The narrative is, as far as syntax goes, and like sentence structures are fine. I mean, there's nothing real strange about it or hard. But the narrative is really interesting and it's like, like a puzzle. To me, it was like a puzzle. I didn't know if the narrator was a, a male or female. I still really... I think I can prove that she's a, a woman. I know she's talking to a man, because she says he several times. And at first I thought she was talking directly to me. Not only like talking to the reader, like constant reader, like uh, Stephen King does or other people do. But to me personally, like she had a an insight to my life and a camera is my window. And let me just these are my doing the buddy read was really uh, interesting because we talked a few times while reading the book, but we haven't talked since we finished the book yet. And I don't know when she'll be when Roz will be doing her review. Maybe she'll just review it at the end of the month, but I'm going to review it uh, separately. And this is what I sent to Roz first off. Uh, it, it was like a immediate and intimate writing within the moment, like a love letter from a distant lover to, as a reply to that same lover, like an infant soon after birth, like an old woman very close to death like a secret to be uncovered, then shared, as a painter prepares to paint, then paints, as a music musician listens to music made in the moment by her own hand and to her own ear, like a first-time writer with something important to prove, like a seasoned veteran Scribner just making it anew. You know, um, I feel as if Clarice Lispector is talking directly to me, like I said. Now I'm going to use bring up some uh, specific examples for those who are reading the book. And see if you agree to me in the comments. I'd really like to discuss this book. Like on page 26 at the bottom. Once in a while I'll give you a light story. So she is giving us a story. She mentions a few times. Along with this idea of being born... She uh, mentions eating her own placenta several times. Page 30 uh, tells us more than uh, a few times that she ate her own placenta that she, after she was born. Um, and she's... Uh, this is what I think she's writing directly to me. Page 47. What I am doing... What am I doing writing to you? Try to photograph perfume. 46. Before writing to you, I perfume myself all over. 50. Pay attention. And as a favor, I'm inviting you to move to my new kingdom. In being born, she is creating a new life. She, she goes into these uh, like motifs about death, about painting... She wants to paint constantly. She's referring to painting as writing. Uh, um, I want to paint a rose. I want to... Uh, and, and then music, too. She's a musician listening to music. Um, 
she makes a covenant with a reader on page 15. I think I'm going to read through that. She does a lot of jazz references. A lot of secrets. Page 14. A secret between me and I. What am I? I am. I don't want to be I. Now this, <clears throat> on 14, reminded me of the end of Nasikika in Ulysses, where Bloom writes to, uh, to Gertie, I am a, and doesn't get it writ in the sand. You know, I am a what? I am a man, I am a Jew, I am Irish. I'm a... And I haven't annotated this book. There's no markings in this book yet. I've just tried, I've, I've resisted that temptation. On page 71, she's talking to a he at the bottom of that page. There's a motif, uh, page 70 through 71, about this mystery of the mirror where she's uh, relating to a mirror and going into it and her reflection and things. Page 75. But what can I do? And I want disarticulation. Very interesting. Uh, a comfortable vocal range. Uh, yeah, let's start on page 77. She's getting, this is where I'm thinking she's writing to a specific person. The ring that you gave me, the paragraph opens up with that, 77. The ring that you gave me was glass, and I broke, and the love ended. But sometimes in its place comes the beautiful hate of those who loved and devoured one another. The chair there in front of me is an object to me, useless, while I look at it. Please tell me what time... It is so I can know that I am living in that time. I am finding myself. It's deadly because only death concludes me. But I bear it until the end. I'll tell you a secret. Life is deadly. I'll have to interrupt everything to tell you this. Death is the impossible and intangible. Death is just future of such an extent that there are those who cannot bear it and commit suicide. It's as if life said the following. And there simply was no following, only the waiting colon. We keep the secret muted to conceal that everything instant is deadly. The chair object interests me. I love objects to the degree that they do not love me. But if I don't understand what I'm writing, it's not my fault. I must speak because speaking saves. But I have no word to say. What would a person say to himself in the madness of sincerity? It would be salvation. Thanks for the bracelet, James. He will be missed.